we'll uh, we'll get things kicked off. I know we got a, a great uh, a great crew ready to uh, talk about all things RevOps as a service. Uh, super excited to have everybody here. Just uh, as a quick welcome and reminder, um, thank you again for for jumping into Shops Talk for the first uh, for the folks that are here for the first time. Uh, Shops Talk is a biweekly webinar series that we've partnered with our great friends over at Salesforce uh, to bring you best in class folks, content, and thought leaders uh, in their craft. So today's uh, episode is exactly that RevOps as a Service Roundtable. Uh, we'll set the stage here very quickly. We all know the, the sort of evolution and revolution that we're going through right now with RevOps. Uh, I think the most unique part for all of us in our own unique backgrounds is we're embracing that in one way or another. And I think what's really cool about the folks we have on today is they're all masters of their craft. Not only have they had um, you know, backgrounds in bringing in RevOps to their previous companies, but now obviously helping other companies embrace that same model uh, and really you know, having that many to one relationship. They get to see so many different customers of theirs and how they're working through a lot of the um, ways to optimize revenue operations. So super excited to have everybody here um, before we get too far down the road i'm gonna let everybody sort of kick things off um give a give an intro of themselves uh where they work what they do why they're passionate about it um kenny we'll start with you we'll go to jackie john and then chris will let you bring it home but kenny take it away cool thanks brad hey everyone uh, i see some friendly names uh and for some new names um, so my name is Kenny, I'm one of the co-founders of Kicksaw, a little bit of brief history into myself. Uh, I started my career as an early sales rep at Vidyard, which for many people who are in RevOps are probably familiar with that, with Vidyard. Um, worked my way up in sales over to sales operations, where uh, like many other people, you become an accidental admin, uh, managing Salesforce, and it's probably, you know, squeaky wheel gets the grease, whoever asks the most questions about why these fields are there or why they aren't becomes the de facto admin. And so I found myself in that position um, and um, I actually hired my co-founder to help me out over at Hired where I was running sales ops. And then naturally that, that organically grew as he was doing freelance and I joined him in and we started Kicksaw. Um, little brief overview of Kicksaw. We're about 32, 33 people today uh, spread across North America supporting hundreds of clients and RevOps. Love it. Fantastic. <laughs> it works out. Jackie, take it away. Yes. So much like Kenny, I was at the tender age of 33, I pivoted to the tech world and was a BDR. And just like Kenny, I was the most vocal, probably the most annoying. Um, if it could be broken, I'd break it. And I just ended up being the one to go fix it. And more and more Salesforce and like API and connecting everything just became the dessert of my day. And so I kind of did RevOps full time. And now I work at Eustis Consulting, where a Salesforce consulting shop, super tiny, we're eight people. Um, and so I get to help lots of companies figure stuff out and get to the next level with a whole new bunch of problems that we get to solve. <laughs> I love it. And if you're not uh, if you're not already following Jackie on LinkedIn and all of other social media platforms, you absolutely should. So, uh, Jackie, excited to have you here. John, take it away. How's Cloud Trails going? <laughs> yeah, it's great. I so I started my Salesforce career as an extremely non-accidental admin, where I begged and pleaded to have the opportunity to work with Salesforce and transition out of a what I call traditional IT, where you're working with Wi-Fi and email and all the annoying parts of IT. Um, so was able to pivot over into Salesforce, which I loved from the beginning, um, had some friends working at Salesforce, um, few internal admin jobs from solo admin to working with some larger teams, um, had an opportunity to work at another company in the consulting space, um, and now building my own team at cloud trails here. Um, got some awesome partners, awesome team members, um, really loving the RevOps space, focusing on small businesses. Fantastic. Love it. Uh, and Chris, bring us home. Yeah, thanks, Brad. Um, so I'm Chris Feza, uh, co-founder of Admin Within. Uh, I've been around since 2017, uh, doing kind of sales ops as a service, and I guess now RevOps as a service, kind of, uh, it was sales ops when we started, but we still kind of did the same thing for any, any team who asked. So uh, I think, uh, it's kind of kind of been RevOps for a while there. Um, sort of an accidental admin, uh, actually about like 10 years ago. Uh, I was originally in like an analyst role, ran a lot of reports out of Salesforce and was like, oh, there's gotta be easier ways to like hook up some formula fields, do some you know things to make this uh, run a little better, sales leaderboards. I just kind of started getting into it. 
uh, from there. And then, yeah, past decade kind of, kind of moved up, uh, up the ranks in the sales ops world, a uh, couple different, uh, software companies and, uh, thought that every company, uh, should have a chance to get some, some good sales ops people and admin within was born. I love it. I love it. I've, i these folks know this cause we prepped for this, uh, you know, for a little while and have such a soft spot in my heart for, or for the consulting spot or for the consulting world. I was there uh, a lot of my career. I started into it. Um, you know, it was in operations then went back into consulting and came back into operations. Now, obviously running sonar, but, um, you know, love so much of what the, the principles behind how we help our customers, uh, from a consulting angle, uh, which brings me to our poll question. You know, we always want to get in, involved with, uh, the folks that are on the webinar with us. So we're launching the poll right now and very simple is your company working with consultants yes no and not yet so uh, as those answers start to uh, to come in we're getting a lot of yeses i think uh, one of the coolest parts is we were watching you know some of the folks uh, come into this uh, into this webinar you know we brought a lot of our customers along with us right you know, i've had conversations all week with a lot of our customers like absolutely i, I know uh, intimately what some of the pain points are that you're trying to solve for, you should 100% join uh, Shops Talk this week. We're going to talk about so many of them. So uh, overwhelmingly, look, 75% of folks that are answering this right now is, uh, is saying yes. And so love seeing folks take advantage of that. I think as we get into the topic of conversation, which will kick things off now, um, I think it's important for all of us to actually just get a definition of this. How do you define RevOps as a service. We've had previous webinars where we just talk about you know, what is RevOps? Um, why are we here? What are we doing? Manas and I talked about this a good bit on, on Shops Talk episode one. So, you know, we'll start at the top. You know, what do you define RevOps as? Uh, Jackie, we'll let you kick things off for us. Yes. So in my mind, RevOps is really any system that helps or supports a company and the people within it to scale and grow. Um, and just that could be very classically one of my clients, it, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, all of a sudden they had a remote BDR team. Well, they're going to use some sort of sales engagement platform and a dialer. Um, and then another one of my clients, it's a financial services for, firm, and they just needed a better way to book client meetings, right? So hooking up Calendly, getting it to smartly know who to book you with um, and who to alert and all that stuff. So it's really anything that helps you get to the next level. And sometimes it does take an outside view to sort of see your entire revenue engine and hone in on like, mm, you're saying that lead gen is your issue. It's not your issue. <laughs> and you see this little conversion over here. Sometimes you just get too stuck in your own world and it really takes someone else to look at it. Um, with fresh eyes. I love that. I think it's so true. I think the, again, we, we talked about at the very beginning, it's so cool where all of you have so many different customers. So I think just the knowledge share of, you know, this is how customer one is solving this problem. This is how we've solved this for customer two in the past. Uh, you're spot on. So John, we'd love to hear from you. When you think of RevOps as a service, um, you know, let us know the first thing that comes to mind and how you guys are approaching it. Yeah. I mean, exactly what Jackie said of it can be anything like and so I think of it very much as an umbrella that does include so many different pieces and which pieces you know, we're focusing on um, is different for each scenario, but it can be anything from marketing to sales development to the lead gen and nurturing outbound sales all the way through invoicing and like getting the money into the bank account. Um, and so what that translates to as well is anything that's customer facing because you know the revenue comes from the customers so bringing in you know, or to use a, a salesforce favorite term that 360 view it's all of the platforms and systems behind that i love it and and you're spot on i think the umbrella analogy of it and and following the revenue right you know we talk so much about um you know the customer journey one of the biggest pillars of RevOps is following that data and the systems and that transition for the customer journey all the back end pieces of it that go into it so you're you're spot on uh chris we'll let you uh, let you go next how do you define RevOps as a service sure yeah i mean i think um i've always thought of it as just like it's essentially delivering the same function as you would as a like internal, you know, full-time employee in, in RevOps, um, but just providing that in like a, you know, a fractional or flexible, flexible basis. So like, um, you know, I think there's a lot of desire from companies, uh, especially over the past couple of years, like 
you know, a lot of uh, leaders have sales leaders, marketing leaders, et cetera, have worked with like great operations people. And they know that that's important, you know, as they go to their next company and they kind of want to put that foundation in. Um, and so, you know, there, there maybe a, is a gap like where they're potentially still scaling up. Uh, they don't necessarily need to have someone, you know, butt and seat 40 hours a week to, to kind of do what they need to do. Um, but they need to get that, you know, expert guidance uh, along the way. So um, kind of helping just provide that in a, in a fashion that like, is a little bit more flexible for companies rather than the traditional hiring model. And sometimes it can be like supplementing, you know, the folks in house too, just to kind of add bandwidth or, or make stuff happen even quicker too. Yeah, you're spot on. I think as, as companies grow, the need for it happens often. We talk so much about when's the right time to hire operations and everybody's got this benchmark of, oh, when your company hits 50 people, there's so often you're behind the eight ball at 50 people. And so um, <laughs> you're bringing in RevOps as a service sometimes prior to that to set a foundation is, is pivotal. So, uh, and Kenny, you know, we'll, we'll let you bring it home. Let us know when you think of, uh, you know, RevOps as a service, how you guys define yeah, it. Yeah, I think a lot of people would would read that question and say RevOps being the operative word there, but I'm going to focus on as a service. And I think um, what what I what I've learned in the past few years being in the services business is, yes, RevOps is a new term and a new function, but providing a service to a person has has been the same as it has been for hundreds of years, right? And I think a lot of people have become experts in certain things. And I think there is a right way to service and a wrong way to service. I think there's, um, I think there's foundational practices and best practices and first level principles about implementing certain systems, tools, processes, and people that support them. And so I think RevOps as a service is you're taking uh, what would hopefully be people that have amassed many years of experience and knowledge and uh, are able to provide that in short bursts to some degree to a company that's looking to propel or move quicker, right? You can go ahead and remodel your kitchen and that will take you months and months, or you can bring someone who's done this a thousand times and tell you the answer, the, the right answer the first time. And so I think what people are looking for is a way to expedite and solve their problems in a manner that doesn't require them to have to consistently make those mistakes or learn from their mistakes, but rather tell some, have someone give them the, uh, the answer almost instantaneously. I love that. And it, I'm not sure if you saw the question that came in the chat from uh, from Eddie, but it, you, you answered it probably without even knowing, you know, how, how can teams of one, um, you love to ask about a team of one concept and how RevOps as a service can help do that. Well, it helps expedite some of that familiarity of a system they might not, you know, have full exposure to or full expertise on, but again, it helps expedite the eventual outcome that you're trying to get to. So absolutely love that. Um, you know, when I think about uh, RevOps as a service, um, and, and Chris, you kind of mentioned this and we'll, we'll kind of go down this route now. There's a right time and probably a wrong time to start leveraging RevOps as a service or starting to bring in, uh, you know, this outside note. But, um, you know, Katie, we'll kind of do a little bit of a fantasy football snake draft. Uh, you, you finished that last question, so we'll let you start here. But, you know, when you think about as you're engaging with your customers, um, when is the right time for them to, you know, to reach out to you, to reach out to anyone on the panel or, or reach out to find help for bringing on some additional RevOps help? Yeah, I've thought a lot about this question, and um, uh, there's, there's, I think, a, a, a straightforward answer, and then there's a little bit of a contradictory answer that you'd expect, and um, I'm obviously going to go against the grain here, and I think, I think the right time to leverage RevOps as a service is when it's no longer um, a profitable endeavor for whoever is currently doing it to continuously do it, and oftentimes that falls under the scope of a CEO or a VP of sales who have far better leveraged, um, who, who need to leverage their time in a better manner. And it's not that RevOps activities or processes are lesser than or not, not, as, not as leveraged as what the sales team is doing, but it's just not what they're brought on to do. And everyone knows that you can only do two things so well. And so when it starts to take up a significant portion of a CEO's time or VP of sales time um, or sales rep's time, um, uh, what I tell companies is you got to make the decision, right? You either have to give people the ability to succeed in a full-time capacity or have them have the, uh, give them the appreciation they need to be able to support this because no one gives QAing the love that it needs, right? Everyone loves to um, cowboy in production and um, just go ahead and build there. And we all know what happens with that. So I think one thing I always try to, try to use as a proxy is, well, you know, could you be leveraging your time in a better manner? Is this the best use of your time as a CEO? If you're spending five hours how to, figuring out how to build a report type, 
it's probably better you just bring someone in because your investors aren't going to be happy to hear that you're learning Salesforce when they've given you a couple million dollars to hire a team out. Oh man, you're spot on. We, we talk to our, our customers all the time about using this pie chart analogy. How much of your time are you spent being strategic versus tactical? And if that pie chart starts to swing too heavy, I think K is what you're talking about. You just swing so hard into tactical. Like you need to spend your time, especially at an executive level, being strategic. Great time to bring in RevOps as a service. Um, Chris, when you think about it in that same context, um, you know, knowing some of the customers you have and how you support them, you have big companies and small companies. Uh, curious when you see that, you know, that right time to leverage the, the service side. Yeah, I would, I would say I, I largely, you know, agree with Kenny there. I mean, it's, it, it for sure is like, it's the same reason I don't do my own taxes, you know, like it, it, I'm, I'm not an accountant. I'm not trained in that. I don't have years of experience or knowledge of the tax code. Like, so uh, for me to try to do my, my company's taxes and, you know, even my personal taxes is not a good use of time. Like I, you know, would rather pay someone that money, spend the time doing something that I know, like trying to get more clients or, or you know, providing services to our clients. Like that's, that's going to be, be a better use of time. And so like, while I might find it like therapeutic to like, you know, on the weekend, do some yard work or something like that. Again, like I'm not trying to do that every day to like create a, you know, award-winning garden because that's, that's not what really what I'm good at. And, and so I think hundred percent agree with Kenny on that uh, perspective. And then in terms of like anything to add just for the right time overall, it's, it's anytime you're, you've got your go-to-market teams in place, you're trying to generate revenue. You know, you've got a sales team, you're uh, spending money to get marketing leads in, you know, that type of thing. Like, um, you can improve your operations, uh, you know, to make sure that you're, you've got an efficient process. You've got, um, you know, people doing what they need to be. You're measuring uh, their performance, that type of thing. I think that's, that's actually one of the great, great things about RevOps as a service is it's like, it's not too early really ever, you know, you can kind of be, be flexible in your approach and, and kind of scale up a, uh, as the business needs to. Uh, you're spot on. I think that's uh you'd rather be, you know, a, a, a day early than a day late on anything that you're doing in practice and business and life. I think you're, you're spot on. If you're, if you're already asking those questions to yourself and to the business, there's a reason you're asking those questions. Go find the answers right now. Don't wait another couple of days or weeks or months. You're only going to put yourself yeah. further behind the eight ball. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and that doesn't mean that you're going to go, you know, spend a ton of money and buy tools you don't need and try to do too much. Like, you know, do the right thing for your, for your stage of company. Don't overdo it. But, uh, you can definitely, you know, spend some time getting some foundational stuff in place. Yeah, you're, you're spot on. Um, John, I know when we were warming up with some of this stuff or, or talking about it uh, before we, we launched the webinar, you have a really interesting thought about it, of when the right time is. Uh, love to hear it. Enlighten us. Yeah, I mean, what Chris said right there at the end, it's never too early. Um, I actually was really loving that kitchen remodel analogy. And, you know, I am not handy just ask my wife if you doubt that i really am not i can try to pretend to be but it doesn't go well ever and so if i were remodeling the kitchen and when would be the right time to bring a contractor the right time would be before i even start thinking about touching anything uh, so and along with that you know i see a mindset as well around like revops teams and like when is the time right time to build a revops team and the RevOps team might exist much later in a process, you know, after a sales team, after a marketing team's in place, but you have revenue operations the moment you have revenue, even if that's writing a physical check and depositing in your bank account, like that's at the most simplistic form of revenue operations, it exists. And so, you know, I like to tell companies like, do it right and do it in a way that scales from the very beginning. Um, and we've, we've had that with a number of our customers that we're, doing RevOps as a service with for them pre-revenue because that's the mindset they have, that they want to be able to scale. They want to have the systems in place even before they have revenue. Um, so then that pivots the question into what is the right, you know, service for you with where you're at. And like, maybe it's a WizOps flat group where you ask some questions and get some free service. Like you, you can get some pretty good service in there. Yeah. I uh, love it. Yep. Uh, shout out to all the wizards that are here. Obviously, we've got a, a big lineup of folks uh, that have attended the webinar. So. Hey, Brad, can I interject really quickly? Because um, <laughs> yeah. I have a thought about this. And uh, I think I think what, what both John and Chris said are spot on. Um, but what I've noticed, and I've worked with so many founders at this point, is that um, there is absolutely 100% 
work or, or some aspect of the burden that falls on a founder or a founding team or an executive team to be doing work, right? Um, RevOps as a service isn't, ex isn't an excuse not to draft your customer lifecycle or to understand your ICP or, or the sales mm -hmm. process that you want to employ. Th those things aren't what RevOps as a service is going to provide you because no consultant can come into your business and tell you who's your customer. Typically founders know who their customer is because they're the one that experienced the pain. So what I think first step is before you even bring someone is, is, is try to understand what your vision is, try to understand what you want to accomplish. And it could be as simple as spending one hour just drafting it all on a piece of paper because every CEO loves to just whip out some drawings on a whiteboard, do something as simple as that, but like succinctly ideate on what you want to be able to have as an outcome. And if you bring that to a team, whomever that might be, they should then be able to turn that into something that's useful. But I don't think there's any excuse in bringing in a team and paying someone top dollar to work with you and brainstorm with you on things that they can add a ton of value on. Yeah, I agree. I think yeah. I look back at some of my consulting days and I remember that I had customers sometimes like, I don't know, you're the pro in the room, just go fix it. I'm like, I mean, we can fix anything. We've got tools at our disposal. We've got you know, the mind share. We've got a great group to do it. But like, I need you, Mr. or Ms. Customer, to like tell me yeah. also, like, what, what exactly are you trying to solve as a business? And Jackie, I know, um, you, like you said, you know, with your, your group, y'all might be small, but y'all still work with you know, large groups, small groups, um, you know, everybody in between. But when you see, you know, same question about bringing it in and the strategy behind that, you know, where, what are you guys? Yeah, saying? so I think it would be amazing to bring in RevOps, like, real early. I think that that's probably a luxury like maybe it's your second or third successful startup and you've got all the cash to burn but <laughs> most of the little people out here um we're bootstrapping or just friends and family you know until you get that seed you know um and i think it makes sense to really bring in someone like pay them uh once you have that product market fit and you're 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 some sort of magnetizing your your messaging is landing and you're booking demos right like you you have to have that forward motion and then revops we can systematize we can weaponize please don't make me figure out how to stop <laughs> like, yeah. like i mean i'll do it i've built the vdr programs <laughs> but, but i don't think i don't yeah, I think we're more useful once once it's working, but clunky. Like if you're driving a car and it's like, whoa, we're going fast. <laughs> we're going pretty fast, but we're like rickety. You got to bring it in for a little alignment and then get you back on the racetrack. Yep, you're you're spot on. Yeah, I think what what I get really interested again again kind of goes back to that same question. It's like you know we can we can weaponize so much of this and we can make you so much more efficient, but we have to know why you want to be efficient we want to have to know why you actually have this like burning desire to go be a great company and tell us why exactly you're solving these problems we can help you make them more efficient but you know just bluntly asking a consultant sometimes like hey we've got this mess come fix it is you're not doing yourself any favors if you don't have you know an end goal in mind so uh man time flies and we're having fun i know we're uh we're moving through these questions moving through uh through the episode we'll go a little bit of rapid fire on this last question because we have a couple uh folks coming in with questions as well but um jackie we'll start with you you know there's a reason why we're seeing such a trend in this, right? Like RevOps has been such a big name and a big splash in the market. Everybody's embracing this new uh, methodology of running operations for their groups. But for you know, RevOps as a service, why do you think, you know, very quickly, we'll kind of do rapid fire around everybody. Uh, why do you see the trend in this? Why are we seeing a trend right now? Why is it relevant? I think RevOps people who are super passionate, we're just naturally integrators and like aggressively curious and i think once we start doing it in a couple of companies we're like i want to solve more problems <laughs> i want more you know it's it's almost like a, you don't want to be hovering over the sales team your sales team being like give me more problems uh so i think just naturally that's where the talent tends to gather you get yeah. bored otherwise <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I said, you get bored otherwise. Like I said, John, you're uh, you're next. Why why are we seeing such a big trend of it right now? I mean, obviously, cloud trails has taken off, and and you guys are growing like crazy. Why are we seeing such a big uh, a big trend? I mean, definitely on my team, I see exactly what Jack was describing. You know, we we want to jump into new challenges. It's exciting to learn, and so you know, people with that that drive and that excitement around Rev RevOps tend to do really well in the consulting space. 
Um, so there's that talent pool. Um, also what Kenny was saying, you know, at the beginning of defining RevOps as a service, he hit a lot of that nail on the head for the right talent at the right time in the right amount. So you know, if you need a Salesforce maps implementation, that may be something you implement and then you don't touch it for two years, but it's also a very specialized skill set that, you know, not everybody's familiar with. So being able to bring in, um, whether you're a, you know, a small company with a few founders that doesn't have the time for it in the expertise, or you know, I've been on the solo admin side and sometimes it's just really helpful to bring in somebody that specializes in the particular project that you're looking to accomplish. Um, so I think the combination of those things really brings the value out in the as a service model. I love that. Um, Chris, I know you're seeing a big trend in it, knowing, uh, you know, you and I get to talk and catch up a good bit every once in a while and, and know how much y'all are growing, but, you know, thoughts on why you're seeing such a big trend, uh, in the market with us. Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, it's interesting. I was, I was thinking about like kind of all of us here in this call, like we all basically do Salesforce consulting too, you know, in addition to like RevOps consulting. And it's kind of, at least for us, it's, it's pretty integral part of the business. And I, I think there's kind of like. One, you know, RevOps, like everyone's saying, increasing in visibility, there's more folks kind of getting in the space, more companies placing importance on the function. But I think it also like there's a, um, with so much, so many different sales and marketing kind of uh, and customer success, like technology platforms in the space now, uh, companies are just like managing a, a lot of different tools to do what they need to. And so like, um, you know, folks, uh, ho hopefully like, like we're doing, you know, approaching it a little bit more holistically with like, Kind of what's the business strategy and objectives and like what are the many various tools and and you know integrated processes that need to be set up to meet those objectives um you know looking at it a little bit more from that perspective is kind of like uh i, I think it's an increasing uh trend and a necessity yeah yeah you're spot on there's a there's a, a delta there between how technology increases and the person that has to use it is increasing so kenny bring us home man i know you're seeing the trends as well um you know what are your thoughts on on why we're actually seeing the trend. Yeah, I met someone um, a couple of weeks ago who's had a long history in this career. Um, was telling me a story about them working underneath Arthur Anderson. For anyone who doesn't know Arthur Anderson, is kind of like the genesis to Accenture and um, was part of one of the big five or four accounting, previously five accounting firms. And um, the reality is that I don't think that this is anything unique. I think this is precisely what you said, which is a trend that's just naturally evolved, right? There used to be a flourishing Siebel consulting world back in the day, right? And Oracle database consulting. And now we're seeing things like DevOps. And this is just natural progression. We're just getting better and smarter and more sophisticated and uh, terming things a little bit differently. But um, I don't think what we're doing is all that different. I think we're, we're repackaging a lot of the, the previous best practices and thoughts and also modernizing them to some degree moving to more digital state and leveraging more synchronization amongst the tools and new products that are available and becoming more powerful. So I think this is just a, a factor of, um, there used to be a generation that used to classify learning Facebook as being very sophisticated and modern and tech savvy. And now there's a generation that's learning TikTok that's far more sophisticated and Facebook is no longer new. So I think it's just the natural evolution that that's, that's creeping up. And in 10 years from now, there's going to be something else that's coming up and it may be Salesforce, it may not be Salesforce, but that's gonna help drive the new trend and therefore uh, a new set of knowledge or trends or patterns or industries that will then be that uh, the hot topic at that time. You are, you're absolutely right. I know we're getting close to the top of time, maybe a minute over. We, we have a couple of questions coming from the audience. We're gonna throw them out there. Um, but, the, but I think to encapsulate what everybody has kind of had and hinted on and said to this, the way we describe this sometimes in some of our customers too, it's, you know, you have two trends here, put an X, Y axis together, and you have this rate of growth for technology. And technology is going and growing at this specific rate. And, you know, for better or for worse, but what we're also all trying to solve for is the folks that have to use the te technology internal to all the customers that we have, unfortunately, isn't growing at the same rate. And so we're having this bigger and bigger, bigger divide between technology and the advancements of it. Like you said, it's not just Siebel or Salesforce anymore. How do we incorporate TikTok, <laughs> Facebook and everything else? But the person that's learning that, you know, is, is still learning as quickly as we can. And so it's our jobs as you know, consultants to help our customers make sure that we can help keep that, that divide as minimal as possible to give them the edge on technology. So this is a great question that just came in um, in the poll or in the Q&A part. 
you know, for people that might be interested in starting out in their consulting career or moonlighting, how do you recommend them getting started? Um, you know, no particular order. I don't know if anybody's got the whoever quick on the, the button first can, uh, can answer, but would love to help answer uh, that for the community. I'm happy to take a stab at this. Um, simply because this is kind of a little bit about my background too. Kicksaw was just Kyle and I back in the days and uh, knocking on people's door asking for business. Um, and so were some of the, the bigger players and probably everyone on this call too at some point or another. So I think, I don't think there's any magic bullet out there. I don't think there's a forum or anywhere where you're necessarily going to get business. I think uh, try to identify depending on who you are, a niche or a niche and um, specify on it, specify on it and, and tell people, tell the world about it and, and start getting your hands dirty. Um, a lot of people will say volunteer. I'm not a huge fan of volunteering. I think you'll learn more on the job. I think if there are people who will pay you to do it, you should expect people to pay you to do it, especially if you've developed an expertise around it. So uh, don't take anything for free. And, and one thing that I'll mention to everyone on this call is something that I, someone told me earlier in my career, which is like, you're good enough to do it. Um, there's a lot of imposter syndrome. There's a lot of people that are afraid and it's not easy. And I walk into some engagements after seeing 200 implementations and I'm like, shit, I don't know this stuff. Um, but I, I feel confident enough in my skill to figure it out and uh, collaborate with people in the community and, and some of my peers. And so I think people have to feel comfortable in their own shoes and capabilities and, and, and just kind of hustle for the first few clients and it'll naturally progress from there. Yeah, you're spot on. You're, everybody has a value and associate that value to yourself. You don't undersell yourself. Uh, it's great to cut your teeth on, on some things and, and maybe do it for a little bit less money to learn a new technology. We're all here to learn, but uh, you're right. You're bringing value to somebody, know your worth. So you're spot on. Anybody else before? Um, I know we're a little over time, so we'll, we'll wrap up for a hot second here in a second, but anybody else thinking about just, you know, how to answer that question as far as getting into the space and, and trying to, to grow within it? I think I, may, I mean, you can probably reach out to anyone in this call. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think if you're you're naturally obsessed with something, just like get in there in the community and it'll start happening, you know, like just answer questions in, in some sort of forum and someone's going to want to book time with you, just make them pay you to do it. Yeah, yeah, you're spot on. Um, Chris, I don't know if you, uh, if you had any, any thoughts, I think it's hard to, to mention something. No, no, that's okay. I was saying, like, I, honestly, probably just like reach out to to anyone on this panel. I mean, we're you know certainly happy to chat with folks who are, who are considering. You know, we were all in this space, uh, you know, a couple of years ago or, or recently. Um, you know, like Kenny was saying, there's there's a lot of folks who are doing this on the side. Uh, whether it's you know an old coworker that you know has hit you up or something like that. You, you know, there's there's ways to get started on your own. There's also ways to like, you know, chat with people who are who are already doing it and and uh, get more advice that way too. Absolutely. I think we all kind of nailed it. I think the coolest thing, um, we're all in WizOps, right? We're all in these threads all day, every day. We're all bringing value uh, to help our community do the same thing. If you're looking to get into this, you see the faces on this panel, you see the folks that are, are some of the top uh, you know, thought contributors and leaders in, uh, in WizOps, reach out. Um, I think it's one of the best things we talk about in every episode and kind of as we wrap up, um, you know, that's what that community's for. We want to help enable and help bring folks up in this rev ops and sales ops and marketing ops and Salesforce ecosystem. Uh, that's why we all carve time out of our day to, to do a webinar like this, to, you know, to drop some thought bombs on everybody. So, um, you know, I, I know we're a few minutes over time. What we'll do for all of our, um, you know, for all the attendees and folks that register for this, I know everybody's got busy days, need to get back to it. Um, there's a couple of resources that this panel has come up with to share with the community, how to get better at some of these things, a couple of books, a couple of other blogs and folks to follow. Uh, we'll share that with the follow-up along with the recording of this. Um, but yeah, and I can't, I can't thank everyone on this call enough for, for jumping in. This is such a cool topic. I think we're all uh, just so ingrained in how we help all of our customers and uh, can't thank you all enough for joining. Uh, John, Chris, Kenny, Jackie, thank you all so much. Yeah, thanks everyone. Everybody has a uh, fantastic thanks, day, everyone. Right. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Have a great day.